As we begin to unfold the story of Anderson Street's Don Waters, keep this quote near the front of your mind. If there are things left undone, you go back and you finish them. I knocked out my front teeth. Here. Did you really? 10 years old. Get out of here. Now, we called him Anderson Street's Don Waters because that's where he grew up. The street he rode his bike down to go to school at Romana Riley and later Savannah High. It was uh, a neighborhood, a working class neighborhood. And I grew up over here on the corner. Naturally, when I'm riding along, I'm usually saying, well, I remember that. That's where the Dillons lived, and that's where the Gaudrys lived, and that's where the Cruises lived. And right there, that's where the Waters has lived. Dad worked in the grocery business. Mom was a homemaker. And at age 12, Don joined his brother in the noble craft of journalism. I was a paper boy when I was 12, 13. And then my older brother, who was then about 17, had a morning news route. So for quite a while, we'd get up at about 4 o'clock. Mom would get us up, and we'd throw the morning news. And then at 3 in the afternoon, I'd throw the evening press. The neighborhood where he tossed the morning news has not prospered in the ensuing years. I'd drive home to Isle of Hope down Anderson Street. And what was once a, a, a very clean, neat, I wouldn't say particularly prosperous neighborhood, but uh, a family neighborhood where everybody got along, very diverse, but, uh, and the place began looking increasingly derelict. Go. But now there is the beginning of a renaissance anchored by the Savannah Classical Academy Charter School, which next year will be housed in a renovated St. Pius X Center, thanks to Reed Delaney, Roger Moss, and Don. With Don coming in, that really I think, gave it legs. And so Don said, well, what do you need? And we said, well, we need a building. And he said, great, let's get a building. And where are you thinking about? And we said, well, we're thinking about uh, around the, the Waters Avenue, Anderson Street area. And he said, well, that's even better because that's where I went to school and I spent so much time around there and I played in the parks. And, and it has really a, a warm feeling and a warm place in my heart for that area. Uh, so let's do it. His involvement in there and, and his interest in giving back, and here's a man who, who has not forgotten where he came from. When Don was 13, his dad got hurt and lost his job. His mom went to work at the Bull Street Library. They didn't have a television set. So Don entertained himself by reading all of the volumes of the World Book Encyclopedia. And I decided uh, with my father's reverses that it wouldn't be woe is me. Don left the ivory tower of journalism for the paper industry as a bag boy and then to Kmart, where his fortunes were on the rise. In fact, had been promoted to manager of the lamp department. He collected his Savannah High diploma, had a car and a good job, and the story could well have ended there, but for the anguish of his dad. Uh, my father picked up the phone one day, without my knowledge, and called Dr. Henry Ashmore at Armstrong and said, I think my son's smart enough Will you accept him in the college? Armstrong State College proved pivotal for Don as his talents led him into the business school. It was very important that there was a, a university that provided an access point, a beginning point. Accounting professor Lamar Davis was a towering presence on the Armstrong campus who saw the potential in the hardworking young water. And he said, what are your plans? And I said, well, I'll, I want to pursue the CPA certificate. He said, no, you should go to law school. The white boy from Anderson Street found a kindred spirit on campus in a black kid from Hinesville. Don and Ray Persons, now an attorney with the prestigious Atlanta firm of King and Spaulding, fueled each other's ambitions. Uh, what, are you, what are your plans? What are you doing? He said, I'm going to go to law school. And I said, well, I'm going to go to law school. A lofty aim, given you know where we were starting from. There was a lot of encouragement when you saw someone who's striving to do the same thing that you're striving to do, working hard. Um, and then you come to a realization that you know perhaps this dream isn't so far-fetched after all. This is something we can do. Today's Armstrong boasts more than 7,000 students and a vibrant campus which Don has played a key role in developing, even before he became a regent of the university system. 
When I got here, he was the chair of our Educational Property Foundation Board. It's the group that allowed us to be able to build our residence halls, to build our student union. Cindy Dismuke's Waters was also a gift of Don's Armstrong years. The two married in 1978, and in spite of a head-spinning climb up the ladder, managed to find time to have two beautiful daughters, Anne and Claire. When I was expecting, I often wondered whether he was going to be able to be there when the baby was born. And <laughs> lucky for me, one daughter was born on a Saturday afternoon, and the second daughter was born on Christmas morning. Two lifetimes later, the waters would hit the brakes hard, though, when Cindy discovered a rare form of cancer on her leg. It was constantly on her mind that uh, this could be the end of my life. Family and friends rallied around the couple as they leaned on medicine and faith to bring them through. Yeah, incredible community support. Uh, I know a group in our church wanted to come over and hold hands around our house and pray for us and uh, meals and so forth. And one of the great touching things was a good friend of ours called us and said Cindy was not only on the prayer list at several churches, she was on the prayer list at the synagogue. And uh, knock on wood, it's been uh, six years this year. Don spent his first year of law school at Mercer and then transferred to UGA. So we were in the same second year law class together and uh, became fast friends. At Georgia, Don became friends with Curtis Lewis, whose family is among Savannah's finest. I have to say, of course, I was Don Waters from Anderson Street and he was J.C. Lewis. <laughs> The two studied together and even occasionally went for Mexican at T.K. Hardy's, where Lewis won a friend forever. We were sitting at a round table, and it was Curdy Lewis and me and four or five other guys. All of them were from Atlanta, and they were quite well off. So one of these young men uh, started going around the room, sort of poking at everybody. What does your father do? And I can remember thinking to myself, I love my dad and I'm proud of my father. But, uh, you know, he's not exactly a justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. And they get around and they get to Curtis Lewis. And he's between me and this guy who's really interrogating everybody. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. He said, what does your father do? And Curtis Lewis looked right at that guy. And he might have looked over at me and realized what he was doing. He says he wasn't, but I believe he was. And Curdy looked right at that guy and said, he's a car salesman. The friends would reunite in recent times to join with Memorial Health Management in returning the hospital to financial stability. Lewis as chairman of the Memorial Board and Waters on the Chatham County Hospital Authority. The other members looked up to Don because he, he did have the history of the hospital. I would say the obvious choice to go to the county commission to uh, help us with the uh, refinancing. And he very skillfully led uh, Memorial's uh, activity over the last few years, uh, together with the management, of course, to uh, really, I'll say, save Memorial. Don's position on the hospital authority and in the community is owed in some respects to another influential figure at UGA, Professor Bob Level. Level was a Mississippian who knew Faulkner studied at Yale and flew with World War II's Flying Tigers. And when he spoke, as he did with John Tatum, people listened. And he called me just out of the blue and told me that the best student in the second year class at Georgia was from Savannah and we needed to hire him. So Don came home to Savannah, but not for long. While at Georgia, he had passed not just the bar exam, but the CPA exam as well, which requires three years of practice. So off to Atlanta and Arthur Anderson they went. We sat in what was called a bullpen. So I was in an office, not as big as the one I'd been in in Savannah, 
with two other guys. Smart as hell and decisive. The investment in accounting skills paid off. Don returned to Savannah and eventually joined Hunter McLean, where he quickly earned a singular respect for his talents. When the time came for Philip Solomons to sell the family business, his consultant insisted on one condition. We had to either use his attorney from Philadelphia or if we wanted local representation, he would only work with Don Waters. I sure would like to get my team. That feeling ran even stronger in Peter Brasseler, for whom Don worked as attorney in his global dental products company. How impressed was Brasseler? Peter started asking me, quit and come to work for me. Hey, man. How you doing? Uh, how are you? In 1997, Don did join Peter as CEO, which included an ownership stake. That's going to Traverse City, Michigan. Now here's a telling statistic on his leadership. There are 90,000 dentists in America. 58,000 of them use Brassler products. You order from us by 4 o'clock one day, you're going to get it the next day. But just a year after Don took the reins, Peter Brassler died. And the family approached Don about buying their ownership. Dodd put together a plan that shares ownership with 12 of his managers and the Fortune 300 shareholder. Key to the structure is that Brassler will not be sold again. You know, I don't want to be the guy down at Kerry Hilliards and have somebody point. That's the guy who sold my family business and my daddy lost his job. See, because my daddy lost his job. Yeah. You walked on those rails right there. I have indeed. That was a thing that was undone that had to be finished. Another payment forward by Anderson Street's Don Waters. He never misses an opportunity to give back. If we're lucky enough for this school to uh, create another Don Waters or another couple of Don Waters, wow, what a great legacy that is. And he's a leader. Uh, and I think a lot of that is just innate. He's got um, just some God-given leadership. The community should be proud of him and what he's done and what he'll continue to do. Always looking out for as many people as he possibly can. You try to make other people successful. And if you'll do that in every one of the dealings you have with anybody, if you try to make them successful, you'll be successful. Don Waters is a laureate in the Junior Achievement Savannah Business Hall of Fame.